a shout out to G Holla and S. Hey, G Holla, G dot Holla. Hero, G E Holla. Shout out to me to God here, man. Well, y'all said in Taylor, shout out my God, G Holla. <laughs> Rocking right out with oh, G Holla. Thank you so much. Shout out to G Holla, reaching 1 million listeners on his podcast. Uh, open for Whoopi Goldberg, Jay Leno, Don Rickles, um, and who else? Gary Shanley did um, the National Telethon for Jerry Lewis twice, opened his show twice uh, in, in, around Las Vegas and Atlantic City, between Atlantic City, Lake Tahoe, Reno. And then I started traveling the world uh, mm. with the Royal Command Performance of Queen Elizabeth and Prince Philip. Mm. So that was in Australia, in Brisbane. And that's why I tell my my friends, and, and, and sometimes I do teach voice, that you never know who's in the audience. You never know who's in the audience. So it's not the people who didn't show up that you have to be re entertained to. It's the people who did. And so I have performed to two people on a show doing a showcase in Las Vegas. And actually I saw my name on a marquee in London before I saw my name on a marquee in Las Vegas. Oh wow. So yeah. Uh while I was out filming um the movie Blackjack, I heard about this showcase uh at the Sahara Hotel run by Sandy Hackett, who was Buddy Hackett's son. And it was a very legitimate showcase. They had buyers come in. They would look at the acts and they would buy acts from the showcase. Well, um, I got wind of it. I went in. I think I was number three from the very end. And it was just two two other guys and the janitor in there trying to, I'm, I'm just waiting for you guys to leave. <laughs> <laughs> Ma'am, just, just sing your song so I can leave already, okay? <laughs> So I sang three songs, and when I came off the stage, these two gentlemen approached me, and we exchanged information. And the next thing I know, I'm on a plane going to um, England uh, to sing with a a 16 piece orchestra, you know. Wow. And um, so I saw my my face, my name on a marquee in London before I saw it in Las Vegas. So from there, I started going, I went to Bangkok again. I went to Bangkok. Um, I'm singing, doing my show. Uh, there was these wonderful Australians who came in. And um, there was, I can, I could tell right away they were showbiz. They were showbiz people, you know. So I was at the Dusatani Hotel. And it, again, it was 16 piece orchestra. Um, and uh, somebody shouted from the from their group, sing waltzing Matilda. And Ooh. I said, what is a Matilda? <laughs> and so all, 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 all of a sudden, this gentleman jumps up. And you don't come on my stage unless I invite you. I don't Ooh. come out there. You don't come up here. <laughs> right? That's why I like a Sure 58 Beta microphone. It's just... <laughs> Okay, it has come in handy on many occasions, <laughs> even when I'm not on stage. And so, um, <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> so um, he sang Waltz and Matilda. I let him sing, and it was, and everybody applauded in his group and everything. So. I later found out what Walsing Matilda was, and I, I in, in, later introduced. So when I finished my show, I came down to meet the entourage from Australia, and his name was Paul Sharrett. He was so elegant and eloquent, and um, God rest him because he's gone, but I'm still in touch with his his wife, Susie Sharrett. So he said, I'm his holiday. Um, uh, I, uh, I'm this, 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 this with a television station. Uh, let's exchange information and I will get back with you in about six months. And you know, you've heard that before, right? Well, six months came and he said, well, Loretta, how would you like to um, be on a Royal Command performance of Queen Elizabeth and Prince Philip? I said, let's book it. <laughs> So they flew me out, and um, I had just had I had just bought all these 
fabulous gowns and things from Bangkok because Bangkok was just uh, incredible for shopping. So I did, they treated me royally in, in Brisbane, Australia. I was there twice. Paul Sherrod brought me over twice. But um, I did a fashion layout. Um, it was a beautiful time. Uh, they just treated me like royalty. I had a wonderful, that was one of the most highlights, the, the most incredible highlights of my career because I was the only American that was, rep I, was I was representing the United States of America. Yeah, so that uh, whole, um, my whole segment is on my YouTube channel, which is Loretta Holloway, YouTube, just find Loretta Holloway YouTube. Um, and um, I, I went to Bangkok, I've been to Shanghai, China, um, Santiago, Chile. Um, I've been to Nice and the Isles of Greece. I've sipped champagne on the yacht. Ooh. I moved to like Harlow and Monte Carlo, and I showed them what I. Oh, fancy darling, fancy. Fancy darling. <laughs> now that's from one of my CDs called Loretta Holloway Quietly. And um, oh, let me show you. Let me show you. This is oh, but I want to talk about this is my debut CD. Hold, hold it a little bit more. Yeah, right, it's right. called Loretta Holloway Quietly. There are 17 ballads on here, all ballads. I did cover songs um, because I have a very, very, very big voice. And usually the songs that I do very big, I contain them. And thus I found a wonderful power in being quiet. This CD saved my life. Because I had gone through three um, situations where they were almost going to happen. I had, uh, in, uh, I was recording different songs with different people. Uh, they were all original songs. Gerald Al Albright was playing on some of the tracks. Um, never got released. Um, the people disappeared. <laughs> the money disappeared. <laughs> you know, and all I ended up with was a cassette tape. But, uh, and so I said, once before I die, I wanted to see my face on the cover of a, of a uh, CD if I have to produce it myself. So this is streaming live on all um, streaming platforms. However, however, you haven't said a word. Anyway. Um... <laughs> I, I'm, I'm listening. I mean, you're, you're, you're narrating a beautiful story. I'm sorry. I'm just, li I'm, I'm a listener. So pardon me. <laughs> oh, very good. That's yeah, that, I, I have a tendency to kind of take over control. <laughs> I've been accused of that. No, well, no, no, I'm no, very... no. The, the, you're, you're giving us um, your firsthand account of your life. And like you know, we only live for a cer certain amount of time. Even mm -hmm. long after both of us are gone, these are being your words. It won't be me saying, you know, you'll be narrating your whole story from this point. And I love it. Continue. I'm listening. Okay. So, uh, and... 2022, 23, I re re released my two new singles. Um, um, my anthem is called That Lady. It was a gentleman by the name of um, Joseph Williams, Jojo Williams of uh, Just Joe Records. Uh, we had known each other for a long time. He got back in touch with me after a couple of years and said, Loretta, I got this song for you. And it was called um, at first, it was simply called um, I Am That Lady. But the song, the music resonated within me so much uh, that I said, well, why are you giving away the element of surprise? Why, why, why are you taking away the element of surprise at the very beginning of the, the song? So I rearranged it. So I co-wrote it. Um, and it was called That Lady. And I made a promise to my mother before she transitioned, that I would start singing and writing and recording my own songs. So that lady is a promise fulfilled. Now, the second song is called Feels Like Love Again. And these all also are all on streaming platforms. I still want to get it on Sirius XM. It's not on Sirius XM. You know how to get it on Sirius XM, G? Um, well, I'll, I'll research it for you. And whatever I come up with, I'll send it to you. That would be lovely. Yes. Um, 
and it's more R and B flavored. Uh -huh. uh, and it's one of the songs that that was in when I was d doing the um, when I was doing the time of the three almost record deals coming together. That was one of the songs that I had written called Feels Like Love Again. And it was a ballad. But um, I wrote it from an almost true experience. I, I do write from true experiences, you know, but I embellished it a little bit. <laughs> and so, um, Feels Like Love Again, we put a different treatment on it. And this too is streaming on all uh, streaming platforms. Feels like I'm in love again. Feels like love. Hey, it was the end of summer. Well, that part was true. Anyway, um, <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then, and then, look, look what else I have. Ooh, oh, Ooh, honey, I am just loaded with talent. I can't take it. Yes, I can. Ooh, <laughs> I am with blessed. It, Ooh, and with it. You know what I'm saying? Good take. I'm this, this is called my, this is my, I wrote this during COVID because it oh. was going, I was going nuts. Of course, who wasn't, you know? And I, I vowed, this is about 10 years in me, but it's a very short read. It's about 64 pages. But there is a, it's called Inside Loretta. But trust me, there is a lot happening inside Loretta. There are stories, short stories, prose. Um, these are all true um, situations. I have um, short uh, one line, uh, one line things I call Loretta isms, one line Ooh. revelations. I'll give you I'll give you one. Yes, please. The greatest feeling I've ever felt was to look at you and feel nothing. Ooh. 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 Interesting. <laughs> I am leery of a man who cannot cry. Yet I am leery of a man who can cry at will. For if a man can cry at will, then I am leery of the validity of his tears. Mm. Mm. Here's another one, and then I'll finish. Wait, oh, I gave you the best one. Wait, <laughs> no, no, not the best one. They're all um, heartbeats. Um, let's see. Uh, Oh, the greatest feeling I've ever felt was to look at you and feel nothing. That was an actual thing. You're forgetting. You're forgetting to remember or you're remembering to forget. Either way, leaves me empty. Hmm. So, uh, as I said, it's a very short read. Uh, it's available on um, Barnes & Noble and Amazon. Um, books, but people are asking for an autographed copies, so I'm making them available through my website. What's your website? Give it to us, please. www.loretta L-O-R-E-T-T-A Holloway H-O-L-L-O-W-A-Y dot com Thank you very much for that. So make sure you spell Loretta because there is another singer. She's deceased now, but she was a disco diva. And um, so her name comes up sometimes before mine does. Or they say, do you really mean Loretta Holloway as opposed to? I'm going, yes, I mean Loretta Holloway. <laughs> so um yeah, make sure you spell that L O R E T T A hollow way. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. And I noticed that too, even when I was doing my own research. And I was going to ask you were you a fan of hers too, as well? Were you familiar with a lot of her catalog and her music? 
not really. Uh, just after people, people would come in to see me thinking it was her. Oh. And then uh, vice versa. And they were going, well, she, she lost a lot of weight. <laughs> um, <laughs> are we sure we we're in the right, the right show? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I think I did see her one time. Hmm. Yeah. And I ended up with one of her royalty checks, which I turned back in. Oh, wow. I'm glad that you're an honest person. <laughs> yes. Well, it was 30 something bucks. So I'm going. No. <laughs> <laughs> what can I tell you? But no, no. Hey, those $30 <laughs> add up. Yeah. I'll, I'll take them every day of the week. No, that's true. Did, did you have any influences yeah. as you were coming along with some people that you really were, you were listening to back in the day? Well, as I mentioned, my first um, influence was Nancy Wilson. I love the way she enunciated her and um, the pronunciation of words because I'm, I'm a lyricist. I'm a jazz stylist. Um Variety magazine has called me a singing actress where I would use the lyrics of my song as a dialogue. I have a wonderful, you know, and this is not being um, arrogant or anything. I have a wonderful God-given ability to, to bring you into what I'm doing. And I don't have to leave the stage. Oh, wow. So it's my interpretation of things and my getting into a lyric because you can, I, I really won't sing the same song the same way night after night. There were, there's a wonderful way that you can attack certain words and they take on a different meaning. So Nancy Wilson was my first influence. I loved her style, her grace. Uh, Lena Horne, I loved her because she had that fire, you know. And um, I, I am very dynamic on stage. I am very dynamic, um, very visual. I use my hands a lot. Um, and I said, I can draw you into what I am doing through my story. Yes, you can. It, it, it's in, may I say too, it's in your voice too as well. You have a very magical voice. It almost like encapsul encapsulates the mind. It takes over and it makes, it commands like attention. That's a nice compliment. Very nice. I'm going to start reading books online. Oh, that's going to be good. So what kind of books? I haven't really decided. <laughs> <laughs> but no, someone said, you really need to do children's books, reading children's books online. You know, because I can do the characters too. And oh, oh he went over here and over there. And, you know. So um, that's another situation that's in, in the making. And I'll drink to that. <laughs> so you are out of Atlanta. Yes. I, uh, my father was in the military. Uh, we was, I was born in Atlanta. Uh, we ended up also in a place called Augusta, Georgia, as you know, not too far from Orangeburg. Mm -hmm. uh, so back and forth between both both of the cities, uh, most of my life, long story short. Very good. Yes. I'm <laughs> not, well, I'm not up here in Atlanta. Um, I'd like to get, get to Atlanta. I did, uh, my mentor who was, my musical mentor who was um, Skip uh, Pearson, we did do Churchill Downs, but I know it's closed now. Um, it was a jazz, a small jazz club. Um, yeah, that's my passion, jazz. Jazz and R&B. I can kick up my heels and take you for a spin, you know. Do you, do, well, you probably, well, I'm asking for, I don't want to tell you how you feel. Do you feel like um, the younger generations out here now, we need to pick up some of, some of the things that we started? Because, you know, every time we leave stuff alone, there's nothing wrong with it, but other other groups come in and take it over, and you and you no longer see like the influence of like early rock and roll with Chuck Berry and you know Little Richard now like those type of 
guys have long gone from the industry and even with jazz and things of that nature like we're it's like we're losing the foundations of of all these things that we created because you know we know we're not being we're not being shown that it's cool too we i mean rap is great but you know other music and genres that we have too as well just real right. quickly are amazing too and, and we we need to teach our children and, and and even older folks need to go back in and start listening to it and rediscovering all of that magical work well, I, I do agree. There was a time when on the Grammys, they did have a jazz, uh, they did, had a jazz segment. Now they really don't. You can still get Grammys for jazz uh, compositions and songs and whatnot. Um, I think the lyrics in some of the music, there's nothing left to the imagination anymore. You know where to put everything. You don't have to have a diagram. You don't have to have a book. Just listen to one song. And I'm going, that's what that's for? <laughs> well, shut the front door. Anyway, um, yeah, there's nothing left to the imagination. And then I can't say all music is that way. But um, I, I listen to some old school music. I have a friend named Billy Priest out of um, uh, New Jersey and, and he's playing some old school music on Sunday. And I mean, I, I, I took a listen to it that last Sunday and I was I was in tears. I went, I didn't know this song. It was like the soundtrack of my life. Um, and it was beautiful. It was beautiful to revisit some of those things where they were painful or they brought joy through those mu that music. Music has a wonderful healing power to bring you together, you know. Um, and that's why it is the universal language. Wherever I go, even though I've been to India, and as I mentioned, Greece and, and those things, um, music is, is, is a unifying force. You don't have to speak the language. I remember I was in, the, in, the, in Russia when it was still the USSR. Oh, I went over on a private charter and uh, I always make friends with the kids on the ship. I call them kids, you know, <laughs> the dancers, the singers, because they know where the bones are buried. Right. Oh, yeah. So they said, Loretta, we're going to a jazz club. I went, where? In here? So they <laughs> said, yeah. And so we all went, it was about 30 of us. We went to this jazz club. It was underneath, underground. And um, I had the best time. There were these musicians, they were playing. And of course, I'm telling you, gee, it's a dangerous combination with a microphone, a stage, and musicians. Because inevitably, I'm going to find myself on that stage with that microphone and with those musicians singing. <laughs> and so I somehow or another got word to the band that I sing. So they asked me to join them. This is in the USSR, Russia. And I got up on stage, I sang two songs. Um, you are the sunshine of my life. And another beautiful song, I think a ballad. And the people started throwing flowers on the oh. stage. That was the most beautiful experience. One of the most beautiful experiences. You know, and it was just, it was a lovely evening. Um, and then for that short period of time, we escaped reality. And then when we went up the stairs and we were back out on the, the, the streets were kind of dismal in the area where we were. It was dismal. You know, I was on, a, as I said, a chartered um, cruise that took us there. Um, and so we visited the palace, which is very opulent. Um, but yeah, that's how I know. And I've, I've performed around the world in China, um, Santiago, Chile, didn't Bangkok, you know, but now the, the universal language kind of is, um, English. Everyone speaks English, a smattering thereof, but wherever I go, I try to get some, some of their, um, language to be able to communicate and say that I'm willing to learn your language and to be reciprocal, you know. 
And aren't I don't you know if that answered your question or not? <laughs> oh, no, no, you you did. It, 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 isn't it? Isn't it? Um, it's like how we would, I guess how we would feel. Isn't it highly respectable that you're able to do that? Don't they cherish you even more that you have taken the time out to not just separate yourself from your culture and where you come from, but to be have the ability to want to learn and understand them? Aren't 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 you highly regarded when you do like do that when you you take on like other cultures? I think you're more appreciated. It's like an effort, you know, and good, bad, or indifferent. The pronunciation is I can mess up a name in a second or a word, you know, and they'll say, no, it's um, company or something. Oh, Japan. I love Japan. I did five tours in Japan. Absolutely. I would go back to live in Japan. I love the people in Japan, the food, the atmosphere. Yeah. But um, sometimes they will correct you or you go, you know, that, yeah, boy, did she screw that up. And um, <laughs> and I, I remember saying something and the inflection, if you make a, a wrong inflection, it takes on another meaning. Oh. And so I made an inflection and the people laughed. They went, I'm going, what did I say? <laughs> well, I later found out that the inflection of the word that I said, it was uh, it had to do with a, uh, a a physical part of the body, the male anatomy. <laughs> <laughs> you remind me of uh, Chris Tucker in Rush Hour when he was. Trying to speak. Oh yeah. <laughs> Japan, I believe. And it's kind of, they go to these different places and they gamble and it's called pachinko or whatever. And I uh, I was saying what all the things that I do like, and I said something in uh, Japanese. It was in Japan. And I mispronounced pachinko. Hmm. And so it, it took on that other meaning. <laughs> but I'll go back in a heartbeat. I'm ready to go now. <laughs> All I need is an agent. I don't have an agent. You don't have an agent? Oh, man. I'd like to send you some information. Okay. Please do. I am so ready. Um, no, I do not have an agent. They, um, yes. And I'm I'm happy that I discovered Tanji. Tanji. Yes. I, to I told you I could mispronounce the name in a second. <laughs> I told her that. Tanji, Tanji, what is it? Come on, give it to me. You know who you are. You know who you're dealing with here, kid, okay? <laughs> no, that's funny. So how long, how many times are you on a week? Um, it just it just depends. Uh, sometimes I'll have up to 10 interviews. Sometimes it'll be one. With the new year kicking off, um, they're starting to roll back in now. You know, they kind of slow down towards the last quarter, and they start picking up around, like, February, between February and March. But you are one of the most amazing interviews I've had in the 2024, though. I'm going to definitely say that. Your your whole presentation is wonderful. You are a big, great ball of light and energy and wisdom. And like I said, you know, your voice in itself is just medicinal. Who you are is the very essence of all that we need to seek because not only you entertainment, your education too. You have the duality within yourself to give us both. Like we, where we can have a good laugh and we can get some visions and we can see the world as you travel the world and you're sharing your experiences with us. We get to travel right alongside of you, even if it's an after effect. That's how important you are. That's some, that is 
deep. Thank you. Thank you. That's beautiful. You know, and I always try to be elegant and conduct myself. Uh, I, I present myself in an elegant fashion because um, there's so much now that's not left to the imagination. Mm. And it's, you can be very, very seductive, covered. And so I always make sure that I am dressed properly, especially on stage, you know. I'm always in a gown or something flowing. I like things that are flowing. But I do take responsibility for the lyrics that I sing, uh, the positions that I take on life, and um, being cordial to people as much as I can, you know. And um, it's just I take responsibility for Loretta. Because Loretta is, is God's daughter. Yes. True royalty. I know you've met royalty, but you are also royal too as well, you know. Thank you, sir. You definitely have a, a beautiful crown. Um, your your image, everything about you, you you're just a star. Like you were made to come here and design by God for everything that you are to show us like you can be from South Carolina and travel the world. You know, many of us, we're, we're trapped. We're trapped. First, we're trapped in our own minds because we have have circumscribed philosophy that we, we can't do something in, in which we actually truly can. Even though there are some, like with you, you had some stumbling blocks and roll stones, but you you just lined them things up together and you use them as, as um, stepping blocks. You did not, and you would not surrender even now. That is an mm. ideal story that should galvanize and polarize each one of us to say, you could do it too. And you're just an everyday lady from, from the block. You're not trying to be nothing more <laughs> than what you are. That's what makes you so amazing. You know, you, you remind me of, a, of an eagle. They fly oh, at a high wow. But yet and still, they come back down to the ground and get a drink of water. And that's what I would call balance, in my opinion. Beautiful. Interesting. I watched the whole thing on the Eagles last evening. I call that divine design. When things like that happen, that's divine design. People meeting that wouldn't normally meet, that's divine design. Yeah. Yeah. But thank you. You know, I um, I love so much what I do. I was, I am, I was born to do this. I always say that I'm an old soul. I really believe that. I've I've been here before. I know things, and uh, it, it's amazing that I can, I can direct. Uh, I can. Uh, one night I was singing, and I was singing a song called. Um, uh, let me see. I have been to paradise, but I've never been to me. And which is on my CD as well. I, I've been to Nice and the Isles of Greece. I've sipped champagne on a yacht, moved like hollow through my ticket. But um, this one gentleman who came up to me and he said, how did you know? I went, what do you mean, how did I know? He said, how did you know I was going through what I'm going through? He said, you directed that line to me. Mm. Mm. So there's a knowing. There is a knowing. I, I enjoy what I do. I'm in my essence, my elements. When I'm able to get on stage, I have a quirky sense of humor. I don't know where that came from. <laughs> but I'm glad I do because sometimes it's my saving grace. You know, and I said, well, I got to entertain myself. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but I'm having a good time up here. Do you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> but I don't I don't make fun of anyone in the audience or anything of that nature. You know, not like a Don Rickles. And he was a sweetheart. I opened for him eight times. Don Rickles. And uh, let's see who else. Oh, there's. Whoopi Goldberg, there's uh, David Brenner, beautiful man. Um, so I'm surrounded by, I'm surrounded by a good history. I am. 
and stories of that that's going to be that's not going to be another book but it's probably could be a podcast or another um episode from loretta loretta visits you know celebrities or whatever um, i would love to have you back on for that i think that would be amazing <laughs> i'll take you up on that sir I, yeah, that would be because you your your story in itself is amazing. Now you're adding in other these other iconic and fellow legendary people, folks like yourself. Wow, these are stories that we need to see as melanated people on the planet. I'm so serious. <laughs> like we we've, we've lost our way. We we think that you can only just be one thing, but with folks like you, it allows us to know you could be anything. You can learn to play instruments again. You can sing jazz. Jazz is cool. You're gonna have to always have yeah. music to where you're just, you know, bumping against the, 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 and Yeah, uh, in your ear and the, uh, there's one beat and you're not listening to the lyrics. You know, uh, yeah. I, I really, Samara Joy, has really come out. She's a jazz singer. She just won two Grammys last year. I think she's on her way to some more. I love what she did. Uh, she was a TikTok sensation. And then she just went on. Um, she's true to keeping the jazz idiom alive. I love that she does verses to songs. Oh. Not too many people do that. See, now this... There are um, songs on here with verses like At Last, I Do At Last, um, oh. Old Man River. Uh, I'm one of very few women to have recorded Old Man River. There's an old man called the Mississippi. That's the old man I would like to be. I think one night they were playing Stomp the Singer. And so uh, they said, sing Old Man River. And somehow or another, I knew the verse. And I said, well, you gotta help me out with the, the rest of the part. The, but I tell you, I tell you, G, by the time I finished that song, there was something that came over me. It was like a spirit. It was like, I could, I could feel my ancestors in there. Yeah. Told that barge, lift that bell, get a little drunk and your lens in jail. And I knew I had to record that song. Um, there's Strange Fruit that's on here, the Billie Holiday song. song. Uh, Southern Tree. People, a lot, of a lot of times people don't know the lyrics of that, of course, you know. And they say, oh, that's my favorite song. And I have to look at them like... <laughs> Even Billie Holiday said when she was doing that song, people in her audience, they would think of it as a love song. Hmm. Southern tree bearing strange fruit, blood on the leaves, blood at the root, black body swinging in the southern breeze, strange fruit hanging from the poplar trees. Hmm. A love song? Hmm. I don't know what they were listening to. Yeah, <laughs> Yeah. Sudden smell of the gal the, the of the gallon south, those big bulging eyes and the twisted mouth, scent of magnolia sweet and fresh, and the sudden smell of burning flesh. Mm. Here is a fruit for the float troll. Crows to pluck, for the rain to gather, for the wind to suck. I did a thing on Billie Holiday. I've done her story many times. Yeah. All the way things holiday. Wait, let me see. Okay, say, ah. Wow. So Holiday Sing Holloway, the Billy Holiday story. I've done that a couple of times. Um, interesting life, but I did not know half of it until it was revealed in this last uh, movie, The United States versus Billy Holiday. 
I don't know if you saw that or not with Andrea Day. Whew. She really should have won an Academy Award for that. Wow. Yeah. Have any of these studios and production companies ever um, tapped in with you and said, hey, can you sing this for, you know, the movie production or anything like that? Have you had a chance to do, like, any type of, like, song, song overs, voiceovers, that type of thing? No, but I am hoping that um, that lady and um, Feels Like Love Again is going to be picked up and in, in, into a movie because that lady is... Um, Wow. When you hear it, both men and women identify with that that song. Um, now it escapes me. I've, uh, I've been so many places, met so many faces, from the lowest valley to the highest mountain. I've seen it all. I've seen it all. But I give it all up. I'd give it all up just for a moment, just for a moment with that lady. All the planes and all the trains. Yeah. Mm. Um, um, yeah. It is, it is a song that really, when Jojo Williams brought this to me, it really penetrated me. And uh, I, as I said, I did not want to give away the song because I wanted to leave it open to the interpretation of the listener. You don't know if I'm speaking about myself, about my mother, about a lover, or whomever, until at the very end. Because it's all a matter, it's a song about evolving, coming. You know, we've all been there, G. You know, you find yourself. And then you kind of lose yourself. <laughs> and then hopefully by the grace of God, you come back around to where you find yourself again. That's right. At whatever age, you know. Yeah. You're right. No, I, I, I agree with you. I, I even look at like, like you're saying some of those stories about the children of Israel being lost in the wilderness. You know, you could almost liken that to your own personal experience where you where you're lost. Where sometimes you're just walking around in circles. You think like you feel like you know where you're going, but for whatever reason, God or the Creator has put you in that state of barrenness for you to learn. Like they say, when sometimes when you think that you are buried, really you're planted and your yeah. roots grow strong. So therefore, when you get above ground, when things come at you, you know, you're so firmly tied in or entrenched into your element of the earth or your life or your neighborhood or wherever you come from, your family lineage, that nothing mm -hmm. can move. Even yes. if you are along the way, because we know it won't be easy. We know sometimes we're going to make foolish mistakes. We're going to learn. And like you said before, we're going to make more foolish mistakes and then mm -hmm. learn from that. But it's nothing to beat yourself up about. It's nothing to condemn you or make you think that you're the worst, the most horrible person that has ever lived. A lot of times we beat our own selves up. We're, we're like our own worst, worst um, enemy at times. Yes. <laughs> But you know, um, sometimes I say that a dream delayed is not a dream denied. Yeah, because I've been at this quite a quite a while. I've been at this quite a while, and I have miles to go before I sleep. I have not reached the pinnacle that Loretta is supposed to reach yet, not by any shape, form, or fashion. I've got so much in me. I've got so much life in me. I've got so much to give, you know. Um, and yeah, I've got miles to go before I sleep, and miles to go before I sleep. That's right. You, you, yeah. you, you and yourself. You are a seed. From mm -hmm. you, we'll be able to eat forever. We'll be able to be um, nourished forever. Everything that you are, you're setting the stage and the precedent for a whole nother future that we probably won't even see, but we'll know that you was there because you're influenced on this earth. It, it is an energy. It is an essence. It is a vibe. It is a soul. It is a frequency. 
that we'll be able to reach and to attain the moment we discover who you are. You really truly are a seed planted here for us. I accept that. I thank you. That's beautiful. You're right, quite eloquent yourself, G. <laughs> <laughs> You're just a philosopher, you. <laughs> You're making me wait. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta put on more lipstick. I, I'm floored with that. That's beautiful. That's thank magnificent. You. Thank you. No, thank you. It, it's a pleasure to meet you on this journey. You know, I'm just honored that um, all of the wonderful lights, and you're definitely one. You know, even when we close our eyes, we can see that you're sparkling and shining. You know, they often say, Never tell a person they're a star, but stars die. But stars don't really die. Energy and matter is neither created nor destroyed. It just changes form. Wow. You are hitting on some things. Yeah. This is uh, a telepathy thing. Not a telepathy thing, but um, you're feeding into uh, some things that I've just read. So that's the kind of information. About, I just was reading about the stars, you know, all the stars, whether they, they don't die, they don't, they, they're, they are, they're energy, you know, so, yes, you're, you're a deep brother. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> My bad, I tried to go too deep, sorry, sometimes I have to catch myself, pull myself back. <laughs> now, where, where were you educated? Where, 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 where were you, where, where were you schooled? Where, where was your college or? College of Life? College College of Life. Um, I didn't get a degree. I, I got one later, but like that was like 2016. But uh, early in life, I just wanted to learn. You know, I'm an Aquarius, so I guess it's in our nature. that when We are in the Aquarian age. I just like to know. I never want to sit around and not know something. Whether it be in secret, whether it be for public knowledge, that's just me. I, I just feel weird when people are talking and I don't understand what they're talking about. So it, it, it's like a drive inside of me to want to know. And like, you know, when I started to, to discover who we were as black and melanated people, you know, it really just was like explosive to learn that we created everything and how things got stolen, how we forgotten about them, things right. that they, and it really just drives you to like, okay, what else did we do? What else did we do? And then you get to a point, you're like, oh my God. I wasn't taught none of this in school. None of us were, but I'm saying we weren't taught none of this information. And, and now they're taking it out. They're taking it back. Do you yeah. know they want to take out the Martin Luther King speech? Oh, say it again. I'm sorry. They want to take away the Martin Luther King speech. Wh which one? I have a I have a dream. I have a dream speech. Wow. That was just signed. Something was just signed into. Um, Law, declaration, whatever, whatever, whatever they do. Yeah. And and to dismiss Rosa Parks. Uh, all those, it, yet they can have these pornographic uh, books in the schools and to get rid of our history. I think, I think about that. I, I saw this picture of this, this slave and they, and he had this horn. And he was saying, this is how they, the master would call us in from the field. And they mm -hmm. showed him. And I'm going, we survived. Our ancestors survived through weather that was in, 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 unbearable and times of famine. They didn't feed, you know, and we survived this. And this is our, this is our, my goodness, Loretta, get it together. You know, you have to kind of slap yourself sometimes. <laughs> if our ancestors can survive this kind of inhumanity and patents being taken away from the inventions that were invented, you know, um, or just surviving the cruelest of weather. I think about the, the how cold it has been outside here. And there are homeless people. Yes. I don't know how they... God forbid. Um, I am grateful every day for just minor, min, you know, many things, many things we take for granted. Being able to see and talk and hear and walk, having food in the house, um, even though I cooked it and can't eat it, but um, you know, it's like <laughs> <laughs> yes. 
I am not the best at cooks, but I take <laughs> nothing for granted. Yes. Yeah. Full of gratitude. Yes. Yeah. Filled you're, with gratitude. You're right. You, yeah. you, you, who's right. You are amazing. I tell you, man, you know, you should be taught at universities and schools. Like they should, they should have a course about certain excerpts of your life. You know, yeah. you really should. You could be taught at Harvard and Yale. People would gain your level of geniusness is far beyond um, the current times understanding. You know, like a lot of times they went back and now, like Picasso during his day, all these other people, they weren't looked at like that until like later on, like then the people finally, I guess when they caught up to your, to your vibration, so to speak, you, 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 you are our Picasso, our Leonardo da Vinci, you know, your voice, the way that the things that you can do, it may be second nature for you, but most of us, we can't do that. We would never do that. We would never, most people couldn't even stand in a crowd full of 50 people or be in a school setting where they have to do a report and, and just talk, you know, they get so nervous and flustered and, oh, I can't do this, this yes. is overwhelming. But for you, it's like, yes, this is what I was born to do. You embrace your very um, journey. And that's amazing. That's a hero in every story. I don't care if it's Star Wars, I don't care if it's Lord of the Rings or whatever you look at. There's always a protagonist and there's an antagonist or a hero and a villain. And that person in that story has to always come to a point of fruition where they have to embrace who they are. And you do that. You embrace who you are along this journey. That's amazing. Yes, I've had quite a journey. <laughs> and it's still <laughs> continuing, I'm telling you. Yeah. I've had, a, you know, that that is what I express in in inside Loretta, because there are moments of darkness. There are moments of despair. There is um, moments um, just um, relationships that went wrong or whatever. Um, And then I, I knew I had to get this out of me. I had to birth this before the end of 2022. I gave myself that because I was going nuts out here mm. uh, at, uh, and during COVID. And who, who wasn't really? It was scary. It still is scary. It still is scary. All the things that are going on in the world that we can't even explain these new things, entities, beings coming at you, all this, all these frequencies coming through you with the cell phone. And, you know, um, sometimes at night I hear music. I'm going, where's that music coming from? I don't know. Um, I'm not losing it. Thank goodness. There were times, there were times. That's why I've, I've donated portions of the proceeds to NAMI in this book. Because we must, as people, safeguard our health at all costs. Yeah. It's so easy, so easy to fall into despair, uh, yeah. being despondent, being depressed, um, coming down on yourself. Um, sometimes it's really difficult to, to find a light at the end of the tunnel. You know, and then when you claw yourself there, it's like, thank you, God. That's right. That's right. So I've I've been on both spectrums of things, you know, and who hasn't? Yeah. yeah even the most happiest of person people. You look at Robin Williams. Yeah. He made us laugh. I mean, you look at um, uh, what's his name, um, Stitch. Oh, the dancer? Yes. Yeah. Somebody said he had everything. He had a beautiful family, a life, but you really never know what's going on inside, internally in a person. They may have this persona on the outside, but they're eating up on the inside. You know? So mm -hmm. you, you don't ever know what a person is going through. You never know. 
No, no, you're right. You're right. And then, like, you know, sometimes those are just material things. Like, like you know, you traveled around the world. You you would, you were with different royals on different lands. And you can have yeah. all the monies and properties and, and things in the world. Things. But is, but is that really what your soul needs at the end of the day? Right. Because, like, you know, yeah. and, and when you strip off all of this, you're left with yourself. Do you like what you see in the mirror? That's a good question. It is. A lot of people need to examine that. And if you don't, then how can you correct that? Definitely need some shadows, inner psychology work. Because something has happened to you that is not your fault. The reason why you feel the way that you feel. Whether it be a chemical imbalance, PTSD, mm. Or any type of psychological, because we don't know what you have came in contact with. The government has apologized, world government, for doing all kinds of things. It's more than just, you know, even in the uh, was the 30s, 40s, where they were giving black men syphilis, where they wouldn't give them penicillin. You know, they've been putting LSD in the water. I just recently learned, like here in Georgia, between Georgia and South Carolina, they dropped, like it was like 1960-something, they dropped, I don't even know how many, it was like hundreds of thousands of mosquitoes in the South. That's why when you come to the South, there's so many mosquitoes. They did that as an operation. Operation. They're constantly doing that. The preservatives in foods, in our soil, in the air. I'm looking at the contrails going through the air and raining down on us. And the water water, um, our vegetables, our, our animals, uh, you know, when they inject um, these steroids and things to puff up a, a, a chicken, that's going into your system. You know, that's why I never use, um, a, a friend of mine now is saying, Loretta, get organic food, get everything organic, organic, organic. But I, we, we had a, a garden out here, you know, where my parents would raise um fruits and vegetables every year and so well, I may have to go back to that I did for the first year I, I came back from Las Vegas when my parents were transitioning they had a they had a farm and so I kept it going for a year and then it became you know I didn't know when the green beans were done a friend <laughs> oh, I was out there watering a friend of mine from Georgia said Loretta and ready get out of here. I went, what? I thought you saw a snake. She's, and she pulled back this whole thing of the leaves, and these green beans were just hanging. <laughs> I was like, I don't know when they're done. <laughs> <laughs> and it was beautiful. And so that that was the final year. But then there was a gentleman who had this tractor. And I used to love to hear Mr. Um, Hunter get on that big old tractor. You know, uh, I live in the city limits, but that doesn't matter. We got deer, we got skunks, we got uh, armadillo. I got <laughs> pictures of armadillo running through the yard. And somebody said, I'm the only, only time I've ever seen one was on the roadkill. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. And I would love to hear him crank up his tractor. And he came up here one day and he said, Loretta, I would love to plant some uh, some seeds in your garden. I said, that would be beautiful. It would give my parents one more year. You know, so yeah, the tractor is gone. He's gone. We're we're losing a lot of our history. Um, just wow. Yeah. Just and, hang on. That's right. Hey, hang on. In due time, the resurrection is coming. People, we we are starting to wake up now. We're starting to realize because you know the Earth is moving faster. If you, oh my if you, heavens. It's raising up a vibrational field. That's why it's getting so dark so early. Because um, you remember back in the days when you were a child, it seemed like it would get dark at like nine, ten o'clock almost. You know, now it's yeah. getting dark, especially in like the southern states. I, I'm in Georgia, South Carolina. It's getting dark at like five thirty. I'm like, what is going on out here? Yeah. But when I study the Earth, the vibratory rate is speeding up. That is, the Earth going is going through some type of ascension. And it's trying, and it's taking us with her. And if we are not wise enough and waking up to what is going on, like you spoke about, 
eating more healthier. Because when mm -hmm. you get to a certain level where the earth is giving off a vibrational field, you can't be so heavy. You can't have all of those toxins in your body. We have right. to deal not only just our lifestyles, but from our head to our toes, removing, like you talked about, all of these pesticides and insecticides that's in the food, that's in the air, that's in the water. We have to regenerate those organs or those energy chakra systems that we have that's mm -hmm. going being lined up through us of the wheels inside of the wheels that are constantly spinning with energy. And we have to align ourselves with Mother Earth in order for us to live longer and happier and be able to open up our pineal glands or our first eye, they call it the third right. eye, but the first uh -huh. eye that's created to right. be able to see the universe and where and who we are in retrospect. It's kind of like our GPS, so to speak. Exactly. I was just reading about the pineal gland, too. <laughs> yeah, that is it. Uh, but I don't know. Uh, there was this gentleman. Yeah, the, the foods. You know, I I can't tell you the last time I've had a, a cola. Um, it's addictive. They, they're putting things in foods that are addictive. They're, the children now are so obese. I don't remember that when I, I was a child. You know, and it's the fast foods um, because they're fast, they're easy, they're inexpensive, two for one, big dough balls of fat, you know. Um, there was a gentleman, and I won't name the the brand or the franchise, but it's closed on Sundays. And so um, they... My <laughs> this <pleasure>. <laughs> This gentleman made an observation. He said, I sat out there for about an hour and a half. And he said, there ain't no way in the world a chicken sandwich could be that good. And he did a diagnosis of what was actually in that chicken sandwich. There were 40 something preservatives that were addictive. I saw that, he called it sick filet. <laughs> oh, he had a lot of names for everything, didn't he? And, he did. And he did. Popeyes was in there. See, I'm, <laughs> I'm not going to name him because maybe one day they might be one of my sponsors. <laughs> Word. IG Holla said that, not not Loretta. <laughs> <laughs> they they might be in that <laughs> Now I'm needing a sponsor because I'm getting ready to do another show for, it's called um, Celebrating the Community, where we're doing a fundraiser for the, uh, it's a beautiful little church called South, um, South Main Mercy Chapel. I did a wonderful, absolutely, that was another show that I just, it was just my myself and the pianist, Russ Long. I love him. I love him. I love him to death. We didn't need a band, just Russ and myself. And um, it's raising money for the, the the church caters to homeless, the homeless population. So we're getting ready to do another um, little bit of Holloway community, celebrating the community. And that's coming up on June 23rd. Um, I will be doing something at the Anderson University in May uh, in partnership with the uh, United, United to Way. Um, and they are also helping to raise money for it's a beautiful little church. It embraces you, um, the um, Mercy Chapel. So those are the things I have coming up. I've got some more songs in me that I need to redo. One is called Ordinary People. We were ordinary people living ordinary lives when our paths crossed that day. In an ordinary instant, I realized this was no ordinary day. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't looking for you, but I found you. That's a heavy line. I love that. I don't know where that came from. That's powerful. I like that. I was looking for you, but I found you. Your love for me came right on time. That's yeah. Powerful. That's mm -hmm. very that's there was very another, there was another um, you know, uh, album CD situation thing that just went by the way. But I wrote that song, and so I'm going to redo it, revisit it, and put another twist to it to make it more today or whatnot. And I've, I've written um, about six songs that I'm going to revisit and do. So 
That's it. That's that's the name plan of Loretta's game. I love it. That's amazing. That is amazing. And I see on Facebook here we got two mutual friends, um, Jordan Johnson. I actually uh, helped him when he started his political career when he ran for commissioner here in Augusta, Georgia. I feel, I did a lot of his filming and stuff like that. I, I was following them around, so that's cool. We got on Facebook. We got two two mutual friends. Two mutual friends. Ah, <laughs> yeah. okay. So you're into <laughs> film as well. You yes, said? I'm a videographer and a photographer. Yes. Oh, I need good pictures. <laughs> <laughs> You are a good picture. How about that? Like, oh, you are just too, too. You really know how to charm a girl. <laughs> and a hat person, too. Look at that. Yeah. You are, so, how man. long have you been in Atlanta? Um, all, all my life. Um, like I said, back, back and forth. Uh, I live in Augusta and I live in Atlanta. I have a lot of family in Atlanta. So all, all, all of my life, I, I've been uh, traveling through Georgia, especially with my father being in the military. So, yes. Yeah. So yeah. what is the 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 most distant place you have visited? Uh, we were in Germany. We went to Paris. Yeah, that's about as far around the globe. Uh, Würzburg and uh, also Paris. That's when we got over there. I was really shocked because, you know, like in the movies, you always see it looks so clean. And so I, I know every city going to have its ups and downs, but yeah. you know, they say the skid row is like two, two blocks away in Hollywood. But I right. was really shocked how dirty Paris was. I was like, I, is, I heard this? that. <laughs> and then they haven't they had an infestation just recently. <laughs> yeah. I was like, man. But then to I, add, I started thinking, Ms. Loretta, I was like, when people come to Atlanta, in certain places, they're going to see the same thing. Like, we grew up in downtown Atlanta. Like, that's the hood. And when you go down there for a long time, it was dirty. Until, like, say, like, the Olymp when the Olympics came in 96, they right. started wanting to clean everything up. Clean we're, yeah. like, we're like, what, what is going on here? Uh -huh. <laughs> so, I understand. They can, they can do that quickly. Yeah. Yes. Clean it up when guests are coming. And then when they leave... <laughs> Back. Normal. <laughs> yeah, but I'm surprised because I've always wanted to visit Paris, and I heard that just recently. You know, go around the block. The illusion is gone. <laughs> you know, how long were you there? Um, we were there about like four or five years. Cause you know, like with the military, you move around quite a bit. You may stay. Some people say three years. Some people say like six, but. Around like five, um, five or six years. Did you get a chance to see any entertainment when you were there, or you weren't into that at that time? Um, we, we were we were a lot younger then. Yeah. And I I do remember when they had like I forgot the name of it. The Moulin Rouge. They drink beer and stuff. I remember all that. They were really really big beer drinkers, and the people were very nice. I I, I know it's racism everywhere. I we didn't. I don't remember experiencing it. My mother um, used to tell us like how my sister she had big bushy hair, and yes. over um, the white Germans they would be like it was like a, a thing of amazement when they saw her hair. My mom was like they used to be like oh can I just touch her hair can I just touch her and they was like stroking her hair. My mom was looking like oh yeah. okay, what's going on here. <laughs> so and now they're wearing it. I don't know the dreads the whatever. Yeah. And so. <laughs> Uh, people, people who need people. Did you yeah. ever experience that? Like even men in those countries where they just want to touch your skin, and I seen videos on TikTok where the the people were just amazed. Like in Italy, they just following these um these these young black ladies. They travel. They just, uh -huh. just follow around, like just taking pictures of them. Like they couldn't believe what they that saw. They're an oddity or something. Um, a lot of places that I have gone, they thought I was uh, one of them, like in the Philippines, Indonesia, wow. the coloring. Um, but yes, I have experienced that. You know, oh, I got a tan. I'm 
I'm just the same color as you. <laughs> yeah, look how much money you had to spend to get that color, darling. But then it's like, <laughs> you know, that's what I can't really understand. I, you know, we'll never, unfortunately, we'll never get rid of racism until, as you say, the the last coming. We'll never get rid of it. Um, it's unfortunate. No, no, you're right. It is. It is, it is unfortunate. Um, yeah, but not, not to the extent, um, yeah, I had to, I won't even say it, but when I was in Jakarta, I had an incident where I was having dinner with the, um, the executive. We were having dinner and he was, he made a comment. Now I'm in Indonesia. Uh, and um, and I'm having dinner, and he made a comment about a certain race of people, and I won't say what he said because it was so ugly. I I I had to correct him on that. I said, "Wait a minute do Do you know who you're talking to? Mm. Do you know who you look at my face? I am black. All right." So I, I, when I went to the room, I told my um, my ex at the time, I said, well, pack your bags, honey. <laughs> I read him the riot act. I'm going, who in the, you know, the, the new of the East. I'm going, no, 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 no. You will not speak to me that way. You will not speak it to me in my presence like that. He was talking about a certain race of people, you know, and I went, no, no, look at my face. That's right. So, yeah, I told my, my, to say, pack your bags because we're getting ready to get, they, we're getting ready to get fired. <laughs> but he came back the next day and he apologized. <laughs> he apologized because I don't know, you know, I got a, I got a fight in me that is like, it will come out when 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 it's really good and provoked. Right. It will come out. Yeah. That's right. So, you, are, you are the mother of the earth. Like you they came uh, this you, you you were here first. Like even when they study, they call it the Eve gene, you know, an out of, the out of Africa theory, where it shows that the black woman has the elder DNA of all races and all also all sexes. Like the mm -hmm. black woman was here first, right? The, through through the through genetics, from her comes all of us, and you can't disrespect her, which is being you too as well, and think that it's funny or it's cool. That's why we as black people now and black men today we're going through the hell we're going through because we have to raise our women back up to where she is supposed to be at. She's the queen of the earth. There is yeah. no if what's about it and women have to take more pride in themselves as well the way they conduct themselves the way they speak the way they um uh, speak to other people their parents the way they dress i mean the, the, I, as again there's nothing left to the imagination but who am i that's just my take on things i would not dress that way but you know if you think that's attractive uh, all well and and good but i would reevaluate it I've said that to um, a, a friend of mine, a mentor, uh, a mentee, rather. Let's evaluate that, where we're going, okay? Um, so, yeah, I look at the different things that, that we embrace as a people and think it's attractive. Um, You're right. You're right. I'm telling the truth. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Look, I'm sorry. I'm over to I'm holding you too long. I know you have things. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's time for another coffee, G. <laughs> <laughs> so now what are you going to do the rest of the of, of the day? I'll, I'm going to work on editing this video for you. I'm going I'm to send it to you in pieces because it's it's um, rather lengthy and you gave us a lot of information. And I don't, you know, I want I want to be able to capture people's minds and have them keep coming back. So I'll turn it to like a little series. So it'll be like part one, oh, part really? two, part 
Yes. Oh, how lovely, how lovely. So, all right. Well, I do hope you will explore the music and put that on for people to hear, especially I, the two new songs, I That will. Lady and Feels Like Love Again. Let, let's yeah. talk about let's talk about that because I'm gonna highlight them and put them together. So tell me tell me about let's talk about your new music. Break that down for us, please. I just released two new singles, uh, the end of twenty two, beginning of twenty three. The first single was called "That Lady." It was produced by Just Joe Records, out of Augusta, Georgia. No, out of Johnston, South Carolina, um, and it was co-written by. Uh, just uh, Joseph Jojo Williams Jr., Sadeja, and myself. Sadeja is his lovely wife. Then I wrote another song uh, called Feels Like Love Again that I revisited after many, many years. And that seems to be getting a lot of airplay. Um, but That Lady is my anthem. That Lady is my anthem. I made a promise to my mother before she transitioned that I would start singing my own songs and writing and recording. So as I mentioned before, this is a promise fulfilled. It seemed that I could always sing someone else's songs and give it my twist. And people will say, you know, we never really listened to that song until you sang it. We never really heard the lyrics until you sang it. But uh, that lady is very near and dear to me. As I said, when he brought it to me, it resonated. Um, and there is a YouTube on it, but we're going to have to redo the YouTube uh, with a different direction and a different focus. Uh, the YouTube, uh, honestly, in my, it doesn't do justice to, this, to the lyrics of the song. Um, and Feels Like Love Again um, is a great song. Love, uh, I wasn't, no, that was uh, Ordinary People. I wasn't looking for you, but I found you. Um, which is my next project I'm doing, redoing Ordinary People. So, um, but feels like love again. It was the end of summer, the very last day. The sun was a burning ember in the sky. He caught me by surprise. Something in his eyes said, come to me. I couldn't turn away. It was curious, a little too mysterious, as if I knew him from another time and place. Hmm. Silent whispers in the middle of the night. I knew his voice. I swear I knew his face. Was it a dream? Am I insane? I never felt such pleasure. Would never so, know such pain. Should I surrender? Or let him just walk away? In that, then you can just listen to the rest of the song and find the ending to that story. <laughs> <laughs> but again, I said I embellished a lot of it. I, I embellished it. a lot of it, yeah. But it was an actual meeting, but very brief, but nothing transpired. But I had known him from another time and place. I knew that much. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That is amazing. Uh... So you may find these songs on Spotify, iTunes, iHearts. And that has been, I have never in my life, this is the first time in my life that I was able to say, okay, Google, uh, bring up Loretta Holloway, Feels Like Love Again. Try. See, Google listens. <laughs> uh, li listen, listen too much. Huh? <laughs> Playing on YouTube, Feels Like Love Again. I, I just dropped Google. Uh, and and that was incredible to me, you know, that I could just speak this. That's another thing. Speak life into existence. Right. Wow. And right. when I did that for the first time, it was just, it just brought me to tears. And Loretta Holloway. Uh, uh, okay, Google, who's singing this song? Well, that song is by Loretta Holloway. It's called That Lady. Okay, Google. <laughs> <laughs> I just dropped Google on the floor down here, so I can't get it. <laughs> but um, yeah, I that was an amazing, amazing moment when I was able to do that. And also with um, the 17 songs of uh, Quietly, 
I've got songs on there such as At Last, I'm a Fool to Want You, Can't Help Loving That Man of Mine, Old Man River, um, Everything Everything Must Change. You know, um, I got into the studio one night and didn't want to, I just started singing and, and I kept everything pure. So it's unplugged. It's unplugged. I had mm. gotten I had gotten into a frame of being where I was singing six nights a week, um, two and a half hour shows a night in Las Vegas. And I, I was starting to feel that I, I can't, because things had to be R&B, uh, rhythm and blues, kind of up-tempo, kind of, kind of those things. And then I was sing jazz songs in between or songs that cause people to think. And I, I got to a point where I, I didn't feel like I could sing anymore. And at that point, I had not seen myself on the cover of a CD, even after having going through three um, situations that could have been major, major uh, recording contracts. And they just fell apart. So I said, things happen by divine design time, you know, and so when we did um, quietly, it did save my life. Wow. Uh, I got wonderful reviews, but I never heard it on like Spotify or anything of that nature until last last year. We uploaded everything through Just Joe Records and got it played worldwide. Hey, Holla. Gee, holla, celebrity life, don't miss it.